humanity is at the tipping point. That is the point at which the balance between negative and positive, or more realistically between fear and love, reverses. For eons, humanity has lived in fear which is effectively a screen of egoic self-fascination that blocks the light of love. Love is the infinite energy field of creation in which everything ever created or to be created has its eternal existence, there is nowhere else. Fear is just a veil that you have hung between you and that infinite light, placing yourselves in shadow. To be in the shadow is fearful, because the light is God, life, and his loving embrace without which nothing can exist even for a moment. When you are in fear, in the shade, in the dark, you imagine monsters that might attack and kill you, and your imagination is very powerful. You believe in the darkness, the lack of light, even though it is unreal, and so you build defenses to protect yourselves, thus adding to the darkness and to your sense of fear. Separating yourselves from Source meant slipping beneath the imaginary veil and losing sight of reality. Since that moment you have been trying to find your way back. But you felt guilty for separating from Source and feared that you would not be permitted to return. You then established many authoritarian bodies which concocted numerous rituals to placate and appease God who you believed you had most seriously offended. But God is love, and love cannot be offended. Love gives of itself limitlessly, eternally, and unconditionally, that is its nature, and because you are also love, remember, that is all there is, so do you. However the veil has hidden the truth, the light, the love that is God from you. And because you yourselves caused the apparent separation from your source, you are filled with guilt and fear. God knew that would happen when you chose to experience separation from him, and so instantly he provided the way home. The way home is your unbreakable connection to God through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the quiet inner voice, the intuitive sense that makes wise counseling suggestions to you when you are quiet and open to them, suggestions about how to deal with issues that concern you or loved ones, or even how to respond appropriately to someone during a conversation. The Holy Spirit is always with you ready to offer guidance. However, you often disregard or dismiss the suggestions you receive from Him because they do not align with those that your egos offer, which often appear more attractive in the moment because it seems that they will bring you personal benefits, for instance, the satisfaction derived from making someone wrong or winning an argument, but later you may regret making that choice when you find it has caused damage to a relationship. The Holy Spirit always counsels you to love, to accept, and to forgive others whatever the situation, because all are one, and what you do to others you are doing to yourselves. If you feel loved, accepted, and forgiven, it makes you happy. God's will for you is eternal happiness, and the Holy Spirit is your personal communication with Him. His counsel always guides you toward peace and happiness, but your egos enjoy conflicts and so direct you towards them. If you follow the Holy Spirit's guidance, it will bring you peace and contentment. If you follow the ego's guidance, stress, fear, and disappointment arise. Frequently, you follow the ego's guidance because you feel less than adequate, of little significance, or fearful, feelings the ego heartily encourages, and you think that standing up for yourselves by attacking others or by defending yourselves against them is something your honor demands. Truly, another's opinion of you is meaningless. What matters are your own honest opinions of yourselves in which you admit to your faults and errors as well as to your kindness and generosity. Then, having looked at yourselves fairly and honestly, completely forgive yourselves for any thoughts, words, or actions that you have taken that you judge to have been unloving. As a human it is impossible for you not to make mistakes. It is through the mistakes that you make that you learn and grow spiritually. Most human cultures frequently make children wrong instead of lovingly showing them that they have made mistakes and then showing them how to correct them. As a result you grow up in fear of making mistakes, but you nevertheless continue to make them and then attempt to disown them or blame them on others. You see small children doing this frequently. This is very stressful. Now. As adults, you are in a position to reflect on your lives so far, and in doing so you can see that yes, 
you were unfairly treated but so was everyone else, especially including your parents and elders and betters. Realizing that you can see the inevitability of a person's need to blame and shame others in order to distract him from awareness of his own shameful mistakes by disowning them or projecting them onto others. Seeing that everyone is struggling with similar issues of self-worth and self-esteem, you can start to forgive, first yourselves, then others. When you truly forgive an error, as opposed to making a reluctant acceptance of it while still placing blame, you will find yourselves feeling more at peace and less driven to judge or blame either yourselves or others. Then awareness will arise that you enjoy letting go of judgment and blame, because loving and forgiving brings you satisfaction and self-acceptance that is not disturbed even when you make mistakes, and you find that you can forgive yourselves immediately. It is amazingly freeing to admit to yourselves that you have made mistakes, because denying or justifying them takes enormous amounts of your energy, leaving you drained, depressed, and experiencing a powerful lack of self-worth. There is also great fear that your mistakes will be discovered, it probably happened frequently during your childhood, and you will be shamed. Any attempt to shame someone, even if satisfying in the moment, will return to haunt you either when you yourselves are shamed, or through guilt, when you realize, as eventually you will, how unloving it is. If someone errs, and it really matters to you, then gently and quietly draw it to his attention, and if possible offer to assist him in correcting it. That is loving behavior that can turn enemies into friends, and it will bring you a well-earned awareness of your own good and loving nature. Awareness of your own natural goodness provides you with fresh energy and the motivation to continue operating from your divine center where goodness resides. You each have the power to change the world by changing yourselves, and many are now doing this by making the daily intention to be only loving. Sometimes they fail, but quickly they realize and renew their intent, as they forgive themselves for any momentary failures. The main lessons that are presented to you throughout your earthly lives are that mistakes are made and need to be forgiven. If you choose not to forgive, you will become eaten up with resentment and bitterness, then it will appear to you that you are being treated unfairly, and so you will tend to lash out at others which will further intensify those feelings. Love always forgives errors, in fact it overlooks them because they are unreal, just part of the illusion. Only love is real. And in that divine truth you should rejoice. Only love is real, you are each love, presently incarnate on earth as humans, and love is infinitely self-loving. It is God, the source, eternally loving its creation, that is itself and every one of you without exception. With so very much love, 